Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the maximum amount of current that you can put through a specific gauge of wire. Now I'm sure if you've ever been curious about this, you hopped onto Google, threw in your question, hit the enter button, and you got tons of results. And some of those results you would see a very quick answer of this many amps for this specific gauge of wire. Or you've run into specific charts that tell you exactly what the maximums are for specific wires. And then you go and start looking at your speed control and realizing like this is a 10 amp speed control and the wire gauge, I can't even read it because everything's so small on here. It looks like it's uh, 22 gauge wire on this 10 amp speed control. Then I take another one. This is a 60 amp speed control and it says that it's a 16 gauge wire used on it. Take another one. This is a 130 amp speed control and the wire gauge used here is 10 gauge. And lastly, the other speed control that I don't have in any radio control vehicles right now is a 50 amp and it looks like this is about a 13 gauge wire. So you go and look at all of these specific gauges of wire, compare it with the chart, and you realize that those charts are showing a much lower value of current than what those speed controls are saying they can deliver. So what's going on here? Well, we're gonna go and dive into it and look at exactly this. Let's head over the whiteboard so that we can go through this in more detail. We're over here at the whiteboard. We're gonna talk about wire gauge versus current. The first question that we have up here on the board is what is wire gauge? Well, wire gauge is essentially a set standard that allows us to differentiate two different wires based on their size. On the board, we have this term AWG. This represents the American wire gauge standard. This is something that's used quite frequently here in North America. That is our standard when we talk about wire. It's important to note that this might be used in other parts of the world, but there are other standards that are out there. Another point here is that as the gauge of the wire increases, if you're going from 12 gauge to 14 gauge to 16 gauge and so forth, the diameter of that wire actually decreases. That's important because it doesn't work the typical way that you would expect. If you're familiar with sheet metal thicknesses here in North America, the gauge of sheet metal works in the exact same way. So now on to the big question for this video. What is the amp limit of a given wire? And more specifically, if we look at an example of 12 gauge wire, Wire. I can even give you the resistance of that 12 gauge wire. 1.323 times 10 to the negative 4 ohms for every inch or 25 millimeters of length that you have. Now this doesn't paint the entire picture of what's going on in our specific example. This only really tells you one component of what's happening. That might help you get to an amp limit within a certain application, but it doesn't reveal the whole entire picture of what's happening. And this is really important because as you saw earlier in the video, we have these charts and those charts tell us what the maximum of a wire is based off of a certain condition. However, they don't know exactly how we're planning to use that wire, so those charts don't directly apply to every single solution or application out there. So we'll come back to the answer to this question down here when we talk about what is that amp limit of 12 gauge wire. For now, what we want to do is focus in on this practical example where we actually have this system playing out an electric ducted fan jet. This is the speed control that's used in that electric ducted fan jet, and this is a similar battery that's being used in that jet. This speed control is a 100 amp speed control and we're going to say for argument's sake that our power system is going to be pulling 100 amps. This here on the right hand side is a 6S 4000 milliamp hour battery pack. It's a LiPo obviously and these two things are separated at a distance of 12 inches which tells us that we have a run of 12 inches of wire coming from this side and 12 inches of wire returning back to that battery pack. So the first thing that we want to do is understand, you know, what this means in terms of resistance. The only component that we care about with the wire is how much resistance and what are the drawbacks from that resistance that we'll see later. So the resistance calculation is simply taking our 12 inch run, multiplying it by two because we have two sets 
of that wire length and we multiply it by our resistance per inch. This way we get a total resistance of 3.18 milliohms. Now it's important to note that I do put this in engineering notation. This is milliohms. If you want to make calculations that we'll do here very shortly, this is 3.18 times 10 to the negative 3 ohms. So now we're going to go and jump into our first calculation and look at exactly what happens to power. So the formula to determine power, and we're looking at what kind of power losses do we get out of these wires, is going to be the current squared multiplied by the resistance. Here we get the current of 100 amps that we talked about in our example with this 100 amp speed control. We square that, we multiply it by 3.18 times 10 to the negative 3, and we get 31.8 watts of power being wasted essentially from those wires. Those wires really ultimately need to go and get rid of those 30 watts so that it does not overheat. If it can't get rid of those 30 watts, it'll increase in temperature until something could possibly burn up. You know, before I give you some comparables for what this actually means, let's talk about it a little bit here because this is really important to the application of our radio control vehicles versus if you're going and doing some design on building power that's running through a PC or some other cabinet that needs to take some power transfer from one power source to some load within one of those enclosed systems. In our system here for a radio control electric ducted fan jet, I literally have 300 kilometer an hour air passing right over this speed control. That means the actual first inch of wire on that speed control is seeing an intense amount of cooling. Another thing to consider is in this section of the battery bay, I also have airflow coming over the battery, coming over that wire, and then getting into the ducting and exiting out the rear nozzle of this electric ducted fan jet. The thing that's important is all of that rushing airflow is going to help us remove, extract, and get rid of all of this waste heat so that it doesn't become a temperature problem within our actual radio controlled application. If you're designing a computer at home and you wish to pull 100 amps through it, there's not going to be 300 kilometers an hour of air going over top of your speed control. So this is just one of those added levels of, you know, painting the perfect picture as to what's going on here to make this 12 gauge wire work better for us. So now let's take a look at some comparables. If we go and follow the chart, that chart tells us to use six gauge wire in order to look at 100 amps of power being consumed by the wire that we're trying to deliver power through. If we do that, we're going to only waste 8 watts. So I've redone the calculation, subbed the values all in here, and I get an output of 8 watts using 6 gauge wire. So you may see that as quite a big difference. We're going from about 32 watts all the way down to 8 watts by jumping from 12 gauge wire to 6 gauge wire. And you'd be right if you think that. However, in the big grand scheme of things, and we'll see that very shortly, it's not that much of a difference. And we really don't care about the waste heat that we have to get rid of because it's quite easy to do that. If this was a radio controlled car application, you may not have 300 kilometers an hour of air going over it, but you're gonna see somewhere closer to maybe 10, 20, 30, or whatever it happens to be. That's still airflow that's going to take heat away, which is very different from that radio control car versus your computer or an old DVD player or whatever else that you can visualize at home. Another comparable that we can use is a battery pack. Now this is really interesting because the battery pack is the source of power. That's where we're getting the voltage and the current from. The battery is actually being able to produce and allow the system the load, which is going to be the motor downstream of the speed control to be able to pull that from our battery pack. A typical battery pack is going to be at 4,000 milliamp hour 6S pack, about 2 milliohms of resistance per cell. And this is, of course, an actual C rating of about 28C. The battery pack label might say 100C or 1,000C or a million c these days. I don't know. We covered that in a previous video. 
you're going to see a total power consumption of the battery pack at about 120 watts. Now you can use these two values to really get a good understanding as to the difference between what the wires are doing because they're 12 gauge versus what your actual power source that provides the power to your system. 120 watts versus 32 watts. To take this a little bit further, I grabbed a resistance value off the internet for 100 amp speed control. I don't know if it's accurate or not. Seems a little lower than what I expected. Nonetheless, we have our value and it works out to be a power loss of about 25 watts. Now keep in mind, all we're doing is getting power from one side of the speed control to the other side of the speed control. So just that power loss from that small section there is pretty much on par to what the wire would do. It's quite interesting when you put it that way. Another area here to focus on is how much power is actually coming out of this battery pack and going through the power system or intended to go through the power system. And that's about 2,500 20 watts in total. So when you look at 2,500 watts and compare that against 32 watts of power here being consumed, that is not much at all in the big grand scheme of things. If I wanted to regain this power because I didn't like the amount of losses that I'm seeing here, all I need to do to compensate for that is pull another amp or two and I'm well above this 31.8 watts that is essentially being wasted. So now let's take a look at the voltage drop. The voltage drop equation is just V equals IR. It's the most basic formula that we have here in electricity. We take our 100 amps and we multiply it by 3.18 times 10 to the negative three, and we get 0.318 volts. For just wire, it might sound like it is a lot, and it's a decent amount for sure. If we use the six gauge wire, we would see a voltage drop of just less than 0.1 volts. Same thing plays out here. We're seeing that voltage drop, but if we just bumped up the power by an amp or two, we'd be right back up there by seeing the power that we expected, and the voltage drop absolutely means nothing to us. Here, if you look at the voltage drop that is occurring over the battery pack, remember this is the power source that actually gives us voltage in the first place. We're losing 1.20 volts just because of the battery's internal resistance. To put that in perspective, the voltage drop really is quite insignificant to us. So now that we've run through the power losses that we see, the voltage losses that we see, we've essentially determined that both of those values are quite insignificant to us. Another quick point here to look at is what the designers have actually done. They've applied this 12 gauge wire to their 100 amp speed control because they found that that was a best fit for them. They've already ran through these calculations and a whole lot more to identify what is the best solution for this. Obviously, we would like to reduce the amount of voltage drop within our battery pack, within our speed control, within even, yes, the wires as well. However, if we did that, it comes at a cost. I can't go and throw a six gauge wire into my radio controlled airplane. First of all, it's going to be super heavy. It's also going to be very inconvenient. Trying to take eight gauge wires, I had a battery pack that had eight gauge leads on them, and it was very difficult to wrap that around and get them to be seated exactly where I needed them in order to plug my connection in. So it is something to think about when we're going and looking at the gauge of wire that's being used in these radio controlled vehicles. And the last thing that we have up on the board is essentially answering the question that we started off with, which is what is the amp limit of our 12 gauge wire used in radio controlled vehicles? The truth to this story is it can deliver a lot of power. It just depends on all the different variables that's in its way. And ultimately what designers are doing is going through all those variables, a couple of them being cost and convenience for being able to go and wrap these wires around in a convenient way so that we can get them all plugged in properly and easily. A lot of these variables ultimately determine what is that maximum that a designer is willing to use or willing to push through those wires. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope that shed some light on how we're able to actually pull more current than some of these charts tell us that we can. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.